In this lesson, we're going to look at spring mass systems, specifically trying to figure out the period of a spring mass system based on what we know about the restoring force and how any simple harmonic oscillator behaves. We already know some things about the simple harmonic oscillator. We've already done the kinematic stuff um, where the position versus time is a projection of uniform circular motion in one dimension and that we use a sine function or a cosine function, a sinusoidal function to describe it. Um, when it comes to dynamics, this is really why they behave the way they do. And we've talked a little bit about this with the restoring force, but because in the very simple mass spring system on a frictionless surface as shown in this uh, slide, the net force is the spring force and it's negative kx. So if it dis gets displaced in the positive direction, you have a proportion direct proportionality of a negative force and vice versa. <clears throat> so the condition for simple harmonic motion basically says that the net force behaves in this way that it is directly proportional to some displacement from equilibrium. And we have that negative sign, meaning it's in the opposite direction. So it doesn't really matter what it is. In this picture, you see uh, you know, an object that can bob up and down in the water, right? The buoyant force of the displaced water does that. I think I mentioned that in class the other day. And so it still follows this format. So anything that follows this should be able to be described as a simple harmonic oscillator. Now, we're going to look at two, well, really three systems for, if you count torsional pendulum. But really, the mass spring system is our model, and then everything else, we kind of go from there. But in all cases, we have this motion that can be described along a single axis, as x as a function of time is some maximum amplitude times the cosine of omega t plus phi, and that the net force behaves like negative kx. Now with the mass spring system, we know what that k is. With the others, we have to get a little bit more creative. So we wanna learn how period, angular frequency, and frequency, which are all related to each other, depend on the physical properties of a simple harmonic oscillator. In other words, what physical things can we change and therefore change the period? Now we investigated this in our simple harmonic oscillator inquiry lab with a simple pendulum and a mass spring system. Uh, but we wanna formalize this by doing some kind of mathematical derivations as well. We wanna make sure this matches up with what we know about the restoring force. So how does the period depend on the simple harmonic oscillator's properties, right? If you think about a mass spring system, how do we increase the period? Can we change the amplitude or the maximum displacement? Do we change the inertia or the mass? Do we decrease or increase the spring constant? Um, will those things increase the period? Will they decrease it? Will they leave it? unaffected. And so it turns out from our lab, we learned that the two things that matter are the inertia and the springiness or stretchiness or stiffness. Uh, and the amplitude doesn't, right? As mass increases, the period increases. And hopefully this makes sense because the net force on the object at any point in the cycle is the same. It just has bigger mass. So the acceleration is smaller and it takes longer to go through the cycle. On the other hand, as you increase the spring constant K, you are stiffening the spring, making the restoring force bigger for a given displacement. So you're making it accelerate faster, right? And this is actually true for all oscillating and vibrating systems, even if they are not springs. Uh, we just have to think a little bit more carefully about what K means in those cases. Um, all right, so why does this restoring force results in simple harmonic motion. We really need to relate these two ideas um, and put all that together. So if you think about the net force equals MA is equal to negative KX. Well, acceleration, right, is just dV dt. And dV dt is the second time derivative of X. And so we've got this sort of differential equation we're writing out. Um, and I'm not asking you to solve this, I'm just walking you through it. But what function, if you take its derivative, gives you back the original function at a negative constant? Well, that's one of these three things, a sine, a cosine, and e to the i omega t, or uh, you know, a natural, uh, yeah, e to the something. So we can test each of them. The cosine function gives it to us, d squared x dt squared equals negative omega squared x as a function of time. Um, and if we do all of that, we end up with d squared x dt squared equals negative k over m x there. And of course, what is that? That's just the acceleration. That's the mass. Like it all works out nicely. And if this is true, then omega squared is just k over m. And so what is omega? The square root of k over m 
which should um, relate then to the period, right? If omega squared, right, if I go back, right, if we know the angular frequency, then we can use the fact that the angular frequency, the period, and the frequency are all related. So the period is 2 pi times the square root of m over k. And that fits with what we observed in the lab, right? As mass goes up, the period goes up. As k goes up, the period goes down. And again, it doesn't depend on the amplitude. So this is true. Whoa, I just don't know what I did there. That is true for all simple harmonic oscillators, right? Um, these equations on the left, and then mass spring systems have this particular period. It turns out that even that period formula is true for all simple harmonic oscillators, but K doesn't represent the spring constant for all of them. So that's where we're going to go next. Uh, I will draw your attention to the very bottom line here on this. It shows not just F net equals negative KX. It also says net torque equals negative kappa. That's a kappa uh, theta. So this actually works for things that rotate like a torsional pendulum. And we'll look at that a little bit as well. So the big idea here is that the period of a spring mass system depends on the mass and the spring constant.